We now welcome on a very special recurring guest, our good friend, the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau. Jeff, how you doing, man? Pretty good, guys. How are you? Doing well. It's the beginning of college football season, so things are all things are good, right? Yeah, uh, it's been a long summer, uh, but the great thing about the end of summer, at least once you become older, is that football is back. And uh, yeah, I mean, we had week zero. We went our whistle a little bit, had a couple of games, but now there's dozens of games and uh, it's an exciting time. A hundred percent. Now, we usually start out by saying, you know, what's the weight goal at? So we'll touch on that quickly. Where are you at with weight? You're looking good as always. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really not, you know, I, I don't really have a goal anymore. Uh, I'm kind of uh, past like losing weight. I don't think I'm going to lose much more. That's not really, you know, if I do, I do. But it's really just about making sure that I don't, uh, you know, gain anything back. And, you know, I won't get it back. The only thing I'll gain back, I'm just trying to build muscle now. So, um, you know, it's turning what I have, you know, inward and, and, and you know, kind of chiseling, you know, so. I, uh, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at and, uh, you know, I'm at like 217 now. So that's kind of, uh, where I kind of want to be. I don't think I ever get any smaller. It's just not really my body type. Nice. Now, one other quick non-football question before we start Nick and a few of our other listeners, for some reason, think I look like Jack Mack from Barstool. Do you know, Jack Mack, obviously, do you think there's some resemblance or no, I don't see any, but Nick and a few other people do. Um, I would say you, you, you kind of look like him a little bit. I mean, I, you have glasses on, so it's a little tougher, but um, yeah, I mean, that way. You <laughs> but I mean, he's kind of ugly, so he's not the guy I would want to look like. But Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's not where I was trying to be at, but okay. No, you, you, you definitely uh, do look like him a bit. I could see it. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. Man. I'm just going to keep my glasses on from now on till the end of time. But anyway. We'll, we'll roll right into some rapid fire definitions for sports gamblers or sports gambling novelist. Um, first one, spread. Yeah, uh, spread is really just the point uh, amount that, you know, it's hard to do this quickly, but I'll try to do it as quick as I can. Okay. So um, when two teams play each other, there's a point spread attached to a team. It's what uh, bookmakers believe that that team will win by. So let's take a look. Clemson, Georgia, spread is three and a half. Clemson's a three and a half point favorite. That means they have to win by four or more for you to win the bet. As long as uh, Georgia wins or loses by three or less, you would win. Uh, it's really just sort of derived value that um, it's gained through, um, you know, computers and, and programs to kind of venture on what team's better than another and you would get a point spread. So again, a lot of people just pick a game, whether it's want to win or lose. When you gamble on a sport uh, with a point spread, there's a spread attached and that's the only way you win. So um I don't know if I could do this fast, but that's about it. No, yeah, it doesn't have to be like just one sentence, but just the, the layman's term of each of these or the and, layman's definition of each term, I should say. And and then on the on the flip side of that, similar to what you were talking about, can you go over money line? Yeah, so money line is, is really a bet you can make that I, I wouldn't kind of recommend, especially if you're dealing with high end numbers. But, you know, if you like a game where you think it's kind of a toss up, um, you can bet a team to just win the game. It's called the money line. It's a separate line that's attached to uh, each game. Um, now, obviously, as uh, you know, you get to bigger favorites, the money line goes higher and higher. It's not just a, an easy thing where you just you know play it, and as long as you win, you win. For instance, on a money line, sometimes they can be super high. You might have minus 200, minus 300, minus 400. That means um, the higher the favorite, the higher the money line is going to be. So while it's easy to do, uh, and, and it's kind of more of a layup, you have to obviously attach more money to the bet you make. So if a team is minus 400, that means for you to win, um, you've got to lay 400, uh, you know, to win your bet. Um, and, and if you win, you're only going to win back uh, your original wager plus what, what you, you staked on it. So it's, if you have a, let's say you have a game that's like three or less, like where the spread, it's more of a toss up, a coin flip type of game. Some betters may look to just eliminate the points and bet the money line. Now you're taking a bigger risk because you got to put more out. So you might have to wager 165 to win 100. Most bets you're going to have to wager 110 to win 100. In money line bets, while it's just a toss up and all they got to do is win, you got to extend more money out. Um, and indeed, you could lose more. So, so Jeff, what, what I never understood was, when a team is a favorite and they're minus 300, but then the team they're playing is only plus 150. Why, why, why the big disparity in the betting? Well, I mean, when it, I look at it like with baseball, baseball, it's generally 20 cents different. So if a team is minus 140 to win, 
um, it's going to be like 40 cents the other way, the same way. So it'd be plus a hundred or whatever. Um, why it's, that, that's a, it's a question I've never been asked. I'm not, you know, it, it's just the value that they put on it. it. It's a dollar amount that they put on um, the bookmakers put on. I don't know that I can answer exactly why I've never been asked. So I don't really, I mean, that, I guess, that just shows my big dumb brain. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just how it is that, that they, they create that. And it's, it's, each half a point has a, a, a you know, a, a dollar amount to how much the money line would be. And um, it's just, you know, every so much. Then uh, under or over is obviously, it's pretty obvious. The total of the game, if it's going to go under or over the set number of points. Now you mentioned another term, which was VIG or the juice. What does that mean? The VIG would be what the casino charges you to basically make the bet. So whatever bet you make, you're always going to have to pay a fee on top of it. And that's how uh, the books make money. So whether you, they win or lose, they're always going to have the VIG to make as pure profit. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to relate it to that because that's a little weird. But um, I, I would just look at it as it's the cost of doing business. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of their cut that they make off it. And that's how they make and become a profitable business. Um, so what a, what a sports book's general goal is, is they mostly just want to get even action on both sides. That way they don't get crushed uh, and they are always are going to win because they make the VIG on all the losing bets. So um, they're going to get all the losing bets plus every $10 on top of it. So, um, you know, if you wager a thousand dollars, you're really going to risk 1100 to win a thousand. So it's basically the books cut. Um, mm-hmm. Now VIG is, is, is used in multiple different ways. Um, a VIG at a casino would be what I just explained juice or vig from let's say a loan would be uh, the amount of interest you play on the loan um it, it's all kind of just one common thing and then um a unit per, like you said you're talking about if you bet a thousand dollars you really have to bet 1100 so what is a unit and what does it mean yeah you know unit i i don't i'm not that's not really in my vocabulary to be real honest i know like most new age gamblers use it as a way to track their wagers a unit really is just the amount that you set aside the wager on each game now i know most gamblers have a set amount that they like i play the same amount on every game um so that, that would be my unit so let's say your unit's 250 dollars um you know two units would be 500 three units would be 750 four units would be a thousand um I, I don't really play units just because I just pretty much bet the same thing on every game anyway. So um, it's not really something I do, but uh, it's a good way to track. It, it's a, it kind of measures the amount of profit and loss you have. So that's kind of what gamblers use nowadays. Perfect. And then um, what would you define a parlay as? Uh, well, a parlay is something that uh, you, it's, it's kind of a multi-wager bet and it, allows you to have a correlated payout to the amount of teams that you play. So let's say on a college football Saturday, you see three games you like, you could do something called a parlay where you get one set amount that you decide what it is. Let's say the set amount you want to wager is a hundred bucks. You pick three teams. If all three teams come in and cover, um, you're going to win generally six times what you wager. Um, so you'd win 600 bucks. The, the kicker is all of them have to come in. Right. So, you know, you're, you're wagering a set amount. And you can only lose that set amount, but you might win two out of the three and you still lose. Um, if you wager just one game, you can only lose one game and, and that's that. Um, the amount of, the more teams you wager in a parlay, obviously the bigger the payout will be, but the less chance it has to win. I look at them more like lottery tickets. Um, you know, I'm not going to say parlays suck, but they do. I, I, I'm not someone that bets them. I think they're amateur wagers. A lot of people bet them, you know, right at the beginning, kind of a, People think that sports betting is just something they can get rich on overnight and they're easy to hit and whatever, but they're not easy to hit. It's hard to win one game, let alone five or seven or eight. So, um, you know, people see big dreams with parlays, but I'll tell you this. I've been gambling since I was uh, eight years old or so. I'm 32, uh, so over two decades, and I've hit one parlay above five teams or more in my entire lifetime. So they're not often that they hit. And um, they're really just pipe dreams for a lot of people. I I would say if you're just an amateur, you're having a little fun on a Saturday, you know, it's a good way to make a little money occasionally with a two or three team or something. But most gamblers that that are, that are trying to make money off this or or have a rooting interest more than just for fun, they don't really bet them. Would you say a teaser is an amateur play as well? I would. I would. I I think in the NFL, 
not not necessarily. I think the NFL, they're profitable and can be profitable just because every half point means just so much in the NFL. And if you can strictly kind of manipulate a team six points, I think it's helpful. For anyone who doesn't know, a, a teaser is um, another bet where generally you pick two teams and the book allows you six points to manipulate the team the way you want it. So let's just say you have the Eagles playing the Cowboys and the Cowboys are a seven point favorite. You can do a teaser and take that from seven to one or seven to 13, whatever way you want to go, whether you want to take the Eagles or the Cowboys. And then you find another game where you can do the same thing with the kicker is both of them have to hit for you to win. So, um, you know, it, it seems great and, and it, it seems like a profitable way to do things, but I'll tell you this. The only way I would bet a teaser is if I'm getting plus money on the teaser. I remember when I was growing up, a lot of the books made you pay a dollar 10 to bet a teaser, which just wasn't really something I wanted to do, but people do, will do anything to kind of manipulate things the way they want. I see people betting teasers. A teaser is all about the number that you're getting. So you want to use a teaser on like, for instance, let's say you have an NFL favorite. That's a six and a half point favorite taking that from winning by a touchdown to just having to win is a lot different. So you're, you're, you want to make sure you're using key numbers when you bet teasers, right? Taking off from a, a two touchdown, like 12 and a half to six and a half, or, you know, 10 and a half to four and a half or six and a half to one and a half, or, you know, you want to get under key numbers. Also a rule, you should never bet a teaser through zero because you're losing a full point on zero. A lot of people feel like, Oh, flip a three point favorite and make them a three point dog. Um, you know, you're, you're losing value because you're not getting one of the points because of zero. So um, there's just stuff you learn over time. And that's kind of why I'm around. I don't really do this kind of stuff where I'm kind of telling you what layman's terms on little things are, but I've kind of taught you over the years, like what I've been able to do mm -hmm. and what I've done. I look, I bet teasers, I bet parlays, I bet reverses. I've done something called a lightning bet, which is probably the most, um, um, truly reckless bet you can make. <laughs> and I've, I've done really well with lightning bets. I've also done really bad. I've seen people, I know a guy that did a lightning bet that um, had to foreclose on his house. So like, you know, you can get really in trouble with certain bets. Now, most casinos don't take lightning. They don't take reverses. But um, I remember when I was younger, I, I used to do pretty well on college football Saturdays and I made, some decent money when I was like early, late, late teens, early twenties, doing a bet called a reverse. A reverse is kind of a, it was a South Philly staple. I, I remember when I was in Philly, I did it all the time. A reverse is basically a bet you can make where you pick two teams. And let's say the amount you wager is a hundred dollars. If both teams come in, let's say you take Penn state and Michigan, they both cover you win, you get four times what you bet. If one win and one loses, you just lose um, what you bet. If both lose, you lose double what you bet. Um, so the general consensus is if I'm going to bet a two-teamer, I'm going to do a reverse. I'm not going to do a parlay because I can get way better odds on doing a reverse. Now, obviously, the the concern is you lose both and you have to pay double. But I, I did it really well back in the day with $50, $100 reverses. You know, I'm doing three, four of them. You can come up on a Saturday if you, if you have a couple teams that you like. Absolutely. People are going to hear the term sharp monies coming in. Is yeah. that what does that mean to you? Does that mean that respected handicappers are placing money on a certain underdog typically? Yeah, or what so does that it, mean? So back before there was legalized sports wagering, um, th there were obviously books online, and I know a lot of bookmakers online, like with Bet Online and some other places, and they had accounts that they found over the years that were profitable. They made money, um, and that would be considered sharp action. So it's basically identifying betters that. Um, you know, whether they have a lot of money or uh, they're just good at gambling, um, they're kind of the, 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 the sharps. So, um, you know, I, 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 the whole thing about sharp money is I think a lot of the time it's just bluster from casinos a lot of the time just to get money on certain things and that kind of thing. But, you know, the thing about sharps is if anyone says that they're a sharp, they're probably not a sharp. <laughs> Fair enough. Like sharps don't want anyone to know who they are. In fact, most sharps, can't actually go and wager. They have other people mm -hmm. wagering for them. Um, so like there are things called like runners and stuff like that, where like there'll be guys that are big time sharps. They'll go into a casino. They'll find two kids like you and say, look, um, I need you to go place a hundred thousand dollar wager for me. Um, you know, here's 500 bucks for doing it. You know, that's the kind of 
things they have to do to make wagers and and they become identified. And that's kind of one of the things about the legalized betting markets that suck is most big time books, FanDuel, those kind of books, they won't take sharp action. They'll cut you off. They won't let you bet. Now some books will let you cause they're willing to take it and no matter what, but yeah, sharp action is, um, is a term that's thrown around nowadays. Um, most of the time people identify sharp action and it's not even sharp action. So, you know, you got to know what it is. And then my last one here for a novice gambler, say they have a thousand dollar bankroll. What percent would you recommend they make for a single bet? And if you had a thousand dollars, I would be risking at most. You figure 10 percent, a hundred bucks. I, I don't know, maybe one or two percent. Yep. Okay. You know, I, I, I think, and look, that's, I think where sports betting becomes kind of crazy is when I think some people are, are really stretching to make wagers just to make them. Mm-hmm. I remember like back when I first started doing content, I met, I used to interview this guy from Brooklyn um, and he was a long time, you know, gang uh, gambler just was in it forever. I remember he used to tell me every football season, he would actually go to a loan shark and take out a $20,000 loan. Uh, and that would be his bankroll. And he was so confident in his ability that he would pay back the loan originally. And then that would be his bankroll each year. So, you know, I think there are people that can handle it and they know what they're doing. Um, you know, and they have to go to lengths and they do what they have to do. But I mean, I'll be real, like a thousand dollars, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, I'll see people with thousand dollars and they'll be betting three, four hundred dollars a game. And it's like, you know, you have to, you have to start small, you have to build it up. And, and as you build, you know, you know learn through your know, mistakes a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, per- appreciate the lightning round. You got it. Now, and now as we as we I never do into, that sort of thing, so it's kind of new. It's a change of pace. It was a change up for you. It was. So so now that we've gotten through some of the you know a little bit little bit of gambling one on one and just going through some of the nomenclature of some some uh, gambling terms, uh, let's let's roll into some futures that I really like. I uh, so. Some of my Heisman futures that I like here. My favorite, I mean, it's hard to say a favorite in, in you know, Heisman when everyone's plus money. I think D- DJ Uyangalele is going to take it. I, I, I mean, this might be from the incredible small sample size I saw last year or the fact that he was on QB1 and beat out Real Mitchell and looked amazing and just my big dumb brain. I think he's going to just come back, outplay Spencer Radler and take home the hardware. What do you think? Well, look, I mean, beating Real Mitchell out isn't any great <laughs> shake. I mean, you probably could beat Real Mitchell out at this point. He's a cyclone great. Let's calm down. <laughs> well, now, no, I'm kidding. He, he, he's, I don't know where he is now, but he's he a temple down. Yeah, yeah, he, he is a temple. Year, yeah. Terrible. Uh, look, I don't hate Alagalele. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, a good price. I, look, I think Rattler's who I would play. I, mm-hmm. I, I think he's on the best team to me. I think he's got the best opportunity. They're going to get to the final four. Um, he's going to be there. Um, and I think six fifty at this point is a bargain. I thought five to one was a good price. Um, I played Daniels 14 to one uh, or not 14. I got 12 to one. It's actually went up. Um, I think he's got some, some real um, ability. I, I like the kid a lot. I think that team's going to be very much in the swing of things late. Um, and look, he's going to have a chance right out of the gate. I think his price could go, um, against Clemson, if, if he plays well, I mean, he's all of a sudden, you know, right near being the favorite probably. So I took a shot with him. And then with Heisman's, I usually just take major shots, mm. um, like deep ones. Um, I have Malik Willis, um, I think 150 to one. Uh, he's down to 40 to one. So a lot of love coming from Malik Willis. I think eventually you're going to see one of these kind of G5 kids go to go to New York. I think Malik Willis has the ability to have an unbelievable season. That offense is really good at Liberty. And, you know, they were a team that was, you know, pushing top 25 in the top 25 last year. I took him. Um, I think Brock Purdy's interesting at 40 to one. Um, That's a football team. That's really good. Iowa state. You know, I think they're going to, that that, that's my, the long shot, my long shot to Brees Hall returning 10 stars on offense, 19 overall, building on that nine and three season last year. I think Brees Hall has a, a monster year, just like last year uh, and really just comes onto the scene strong. I mean, I know we haven't had a running back um, when the has been in a minute, but I, I think he comes on strong and I think he takes, I mean, there, there's a chance he could take it home. I think DJ Uyunglele takes it just because they, they locked out Trevor Lawrence the whole time he was there. Um, 
but I, I think Brees Hall could sneak in there too. And Desmond Ritter. I, I also like Desmond Ritter. Yeah, when it comes to sharp money, as you talked about earlier, uh, I, I've heard Max Johnson's getting a lot of love at 100 to 1. A lot of people like him. I do as well. Uh, LSU, look, going to have opportunities in big games. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Uh, and then I took a real long shot, 250 to 1, Bailey Zapp at Western Kentucky. I'll continue to bang the drum on this guy. Um, this is a kid that comes over from Houston Baptist University, goes to West Kentucky, new coach, but he has the same offensive coordinator. All his weapons came with him from Houston Baptist. They're going to throw the football a lot. Okay. They're going to be a high end passing offense. They kind of remind me of like what Washington state, you know, was under Mike Leach. I think that's what they're going to be. I just took some kind of wild shots. Carson strong is interesting too. Um, but yeah, I, I look, if I had to, if you asked me, who do I think wins that trophy? I would say Rattler. And I think mm-hmm. six and a half to one is a good price. Do you think that Sam Howell is being priced fairly at plus 1700? Um, yeah, I think he's probably about, you know, 15 to one. That, that's kind of where I put him. Uh, I think Bryce Young is, is where he is. I think Clemson's quarterback is where he is. You know, Corral's interesting. I think they're all kind of in that second tier. How Corral, um, you know, I put, I would put Daniels probably above Hal and Corral personally. Um, maybe even Bryce Young. I think it should be Rattler, Lagalele, and then Daniels, and then Young, Hal, Corral, Stroud, Bijan Robinson. Those guys. Emory Jones. That's a ridiculous price. Twenty five to one. Emory Jones should be a lot lower. I would put Purdy above him, and maybe Derek King above him. I, I, I don't. I don't understand the Emory Jones obsession. I, I mean, I, I'm also I'm also a big fan of the JT Daniels pick. I mean. Coming out of U.S., I mean, coming into USC, he was the truth. And, uh, I mean, it, it'll lead me into a later pick. But, I mean, coming into USC, JT Daniels, I mean, he graduated early. Um, like, he was I, – I, I think that I think that people have just kind of forgotten about JT Daniels. And I think this year he might remind some people who he is. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I've already bet him. Uh, and, and I think he's someone that, you know, could take that big step forward. They can – you know, I think I'm not going to say that, you know, Alabama is soft this year, but they're, you know, I think they're beatable. And I think George is a team to do it. I will say as well, this is kind of a weird shot in the dark, but we obviously know that in the big 10 over the years, there have been running backs that have been finalists, whether it was, you know, obviously Ron Dane won, won the Heisman trophy. Monty ball was a, a finalist. I think Melvin Gordon was a finalist as well, all from Wisconsin, but I'm going to tell you right now, Muhammad Ibrahim is one of the better running backs in the country. He could have one of those years where he just puts up monster numbers, you know, and, and kind of has one of those wild, um, you know, senior seasons at, at Minnesota. They're kind of a team that's kind of on, you know, they're not a great team. They're not a bad team. They're just kind of in the middle, but you know, someone like that, that can kind of have a big game or two. And then before you know it, he's down to 50 to one, 40 to one. Um, you know, there's some running backs out there. Master Teague obviously is a guy I would keep an eye on. Um, you know, Tank Bigsby, you want to look at running back because some of them could have special years and all of a sudden they have that banner Ron Dane type of year. Now, I know I'm just going to go ahead and say Nick loves Georgia, right? I think you have them at one of your long shots to win the I, tra- I do. title. I do. Is that what I, you're saying with JT I, Daniels? Uh, that, I mean, it also leads into my, my one of my futures for the Pac-12. Okay, go on. Go ahead. Okay, I, I, I my... One of my one of my picks for the Pac-12. I like I like USC to beat out Oregon uh, in the Pac-12 because I think Keaton Slovis. Keaton Slovis he came in unheralded and he has taken the offense and ran with it. And I think he continues that and he's going to parlay that into being a second round draft pick this year. Yeah, I took Utah. I took not only took Utah at six to one, but I took Utah to win the whole thing as well. I I think Utah is very good. I, I don't think people are, are quite giving them enough love. We, we don't ever really give them any love because, you know, they're out on the West Coast and obviously have USC and UCLA and Oregon. But th- this Utah team is really good. I- I'm pretty high on this new quarterback, Charlie Brewer. I think he's really all about system, and I think that's a great system to be in. Um, they have the best tight end in the country. They have a, a group of receivers that are really good. They're talented, uh, one of which is Theo Weiss – or sorry, Theo Howard, who was at – Oklahoma at one point this is a guy that comes in a transfer they have Britton Covey already they have a big offensive line that's all back defensively I think 
they're going to be a top 20 defense in America. They but always have really good special teams. Yes, they do. Keep it. And look, I think they have the best coach in the conference. It's not close. So um, keep an eye on Utah. I, I thought six to one was a pretty good price on them. Um, I know everyone will fall in love with Slovis. And look, he's great, but I'm not a big Todd Orlando guy. Mm. Um, you know, UCLA doesn't do a whole lot for me. Oregon, what's the quarterback situation? I've heard they like Anthony Brown. Look, if Anthony Brown is what they think he is, they're going to be really good because I think they have the best offense in the Pac-12. So I'm a big Pac-12 guy, so I'm looking forward to it on nonetheless. So who do you have tickets on to win the national championship? Because I feel like there's – you know, the three or four teams that are in the running every single year to win. And then you kind of have a few lottery tickets. I'm not saying Utah is a lottery ticket, but how many tickets do you have? Who are you playing to win the national championship? Yeah, so I took Oklahoma at nine to one and eight to one. Uh, I have, I do have Oregon. I bet that a while ago at 50 to one. Uh, who else did I take? I took Wisconsin 80 to one. Wow. I took Utah 200 to one. And who else did I take? I'm trying to think what other team. Um, I think I think that's it, to be honest. I gotta look through my my list, but yeah, I think that's it. I don't um I don't go too deep um just because you know only so many teams can win uh the the, the national title. Uh, I would love to see a G five team breakthrough, but it's not gonna be this year. Uh I don't know if it'll ever be. It kind of sucks, but yeah, those are the ones I took. Now, when you put these in, are you putting some of these in, in the middle of the summer? Because you, you know you said you had to go back and look. Are you oh, taking yeah, I- I bet Oregon a while ago. I, most of these I bet like over a month ago. Okay, fair enough. I, I feel like I would see something online and go rush, put a ticket in, and then immediately regret it after. I, I usually try to stay away from putting futures in just because I, I'll see something, I'll love something about a team, and then the next week they suck, and I'm, my dumb brain had already bet it for no reason, basically. Yeah, Obviously, I don't you know what you're doing, but I pretty much do the, 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 the research, and I, I have kind of like, I, I, just kind of go down and pick the teams that I want. And I, I wager on them. I don't really, you know, I think that's with, with like, as you get older and as you get more experienced in it, like I'm not going to say money doesn't matter, but it really doesn't in this case. Like when, when it look, when, when you look at college football, like with futures, I have a certain amount of money that, that I'm just going to bet, you know, and, and, and I'll have all these tickets. Cause again, the goal down the road, like I've done in college basketball is to have a team that you know, it was 300 to one, 200 to one, 100 to one. And I can, sell the ticket or, or, or obviously ride it out. But um, I, I'm really happy with Oklahoma. I, I was, I, to me, they should be five, six to one. The fact that they're eight, nine to one is, is quite, quite good. But I mean, you look at, you look at college football, there are five teams at 10 to one or below, and then everyone else is 30 to one or higher. So right. that kind of goes to show you where we are, but um, you know, I'm not betting Alabama. I'm not betting Clemson. Um, I think, you know, I think Oklahoma is a very good price. So, so my, my favorite is also Oklahoma. I think, I think Rattler break, uh, beats out Alabama and Bryce Young in the semifinal. And then the, I think they, like, I'm an Ohio state fan. And I, I think they, I mean, I think they, they roll over Alabama and Bryce Young in the semifinal. And then they just absolutely steamroll Ohio state in the title game. Um, but then my long shot, I have Georgia and that sort of scenario I have, um, it's you know they they play Clemson first first game of the year um and I think they beat Clemson first game of the year and then they roll into the SEC title game lose to Alabama and then uh and then play Oklahoma and Clemson and beat them again in the title game well George is not a that's not a long shot unless you got well not not a long shot but I think that's They're just not the favorite that's just that's just not They're what just I think picking a team not the right pick. Okay, okay. yeah I also like, I never understand uh, the odds just because like BYU is a hundred to one and Utah's 200 to one. I don't know how that makes any sense. Utah is in the PAC 12. Okay. The PAC 12 can send a representative to the final four. Brigham young is not making a final four. <laughs> just not like, I don't, I don't understand those odds at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see an undefeated Cincinnati, you know, um, so would I, but you know, they have to expand the playoff. And yeah. yeah, it's a bad playoff system, but it is it, it's we're stuck with what we have, and uh, until we have something better, this is what college football is. There are three or four teams that are going to win it every year, and I will keep saying no. Eighty to one is a crazy price on Wisconsin. It's crazy. I I can make the case that I would have them in the top ten odds wise. Like really, 
Yeah. I mean, they're better than Washington. They're better than Texas. They're better than Oregon. They're better than Florida. Um, I, I, I mean, let me ask you, Wisconsin, LSU, I'm taking Wisconsin. Like it's, it's I think, well, I was going to say that was one of the things for my week one picks that I really like. Um, I think LSU is very overrated this season coming in where are they are they ranked 19th oh, yeah i think here's one thing i'll recommend and this is advice like i i think we have to you have to look at college football as like a week to week thing mm-hmm. and like i think in week one like you'll see week zero teams people will be like oh my like they'll get they get totally oversaturated with what they saw in week zero when you know in the end like i don't think illinois is a good football team i just think you know nebraska is just not good and they made Illinois look really good. Same with UCLA. Like I said on pick central when I was on pick central last week, Hawaii's got an identity crisis. They don't know if they're a passing team or running team. They're just not that good. And, you know, I think UCLA has obviously really improved, but you know, and I can get into that breakdown and, and why I would go the other way personally. I think this is a big, sharp public split. I think most of the betting public will be on uh, UCLA. And I think sharp money will be on LSU the truth of the matter is, and I know people are going to use this hurricane as a way to, to justify their bet, but I don't know about you guys, but if you ask me who the hell do I want leading my team after a hurricane in his home state, I don't know. It's at Orgeron probably. Yeah. Um, this is a group that I think uses that almost as motivation mm-hmm. and, and to kind of play for the state. But when we look at all in the field, defensively they're really good they're the best defensive player in the country i think doran rob thompson robinson absolutely folds in this game like a cheap lawn chair i don't think he's going to have any success i think lsu is just a bigger stronger faster more athletic team than they are and i think max johnson actually plays pretty well i think they're going to look at this as um obviously kind of an undervalued spot and i think they are undervalued and i think ucla is just a tad uh, too overrated here Let's also keep in mind, who's the favorite in this game? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. L- LSU. And now it's down to two and a half. So, uh, yeah, I'd be all over LSU. It's good to know because that's one of the picks that I have I wanted your opinion on. Um, Nick, why don't you finish out your, your favorites that you had or your future bets? Yep. Uh, so, um, like I said, I, I had USC to win the Pac-12 plus 500. And then, um, I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a real um, – this isn't a real big, you know, world shocker, but this is my sort of my feel good pick. Um, and I, I have, I have a uh, Florida state win total over five and a half. Um, I think Mackenzie Milton has a storybook ending and, uh, and leads Florida state to seven wins and an upset winner over, over Miami. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you the best on it. I think, um, I think they're just in a down spot right now. Mm-hmm. They'll get better. They got a good class coming in in the future. Uh, you know, Norvell is a good coach. Um, it's just hard to bet on a kid that had such a gruesome in- injury, you know. So uh, I wish you luck, but it'd be something I would wager on. And I mean, and and like you said, I think they have a bright future with um, with actually Brock Purdy's brother, Ch- uh, Chubba Purdy, um, redshirt freshman, and I think he's absolutely electric. Yeah, we're going to see. Um, obviously, they're, they're a storied program. Maybe they have a little Bobby Bowden luck, luck after um, he passed away. Maybe he'll, he'll kind of shine down on them a little bit. But um, I just think they're a middling football team. I'll make it clear. I'm not a big win total guy. Mm-hmm. I never understood the, the uh, love affair with betters and win totals. I just don't quite understand why you would sit your money for six months on a play that's minus 110, minus 130. It just It's ridiculous to me. I think the only way you can actually bet win totals and feel good about it is if you have a lot of money. And um, I'm not saying I have a lot of money, but I, for me, it's just like, if I think a team's, let's say a seven, eight win team, I'm going to look at them and say, well, if I think Marshall's a seven, eight win team, like I'm going to just bet them to win conference USA and get better odds. Like, I don't, I don't understand like why people lay 120 on a win total. Like it's, it's, it's clueless. It's, it's really the, the, the dumbest bet you can make, in my opinion. Um, Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not you personally. Just, you know, I know, I know. A shot at like you know people that bet them. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to get people to like explain to me what, like what do you see there? You mm-hmm. know, and not that I don't bet them. Like I have one or two that I bet, but yeah, like I'm trying to find ones that are like 
super good plays and maybe I got like a plus 105 or something or at least get something back. But like I see idiots like that have radio shows and stuff. Like they're telling people to lay 160 on a win total. And it's like you're just locking up your money. Yeah. <laughs> you're and you know, back in the day there was a book called Five Dimes. Okay. And you Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. They used to allow you to manipulate the win total. So let's say a win total is three and a half. If you thought they could win six games, let's say you could pump it up to five and a half and get like plus two twenty on it. And they would pay you out when it hits. Like you would have to wait to the end of the year. So that if they be- won six games and they went six and oh to start, you're, you're already getting your money plus. Exactly. exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I did want to bring up something. Uh, what, one of the, one of the picks you gave a long time ago um, and, and at least relative to, to pick central and, and, and gambling was you are super down on Louisville this year. Yeah, I am. I, I think, <laughs> I think defensively they're shocking. I, mm-hmm. I think they're going to be in this game really in over their head. I mean, this game's in, you know, um, uh, Atlanta. I mean, this is going to be on the turf. This is a defense that got shredded last year. They, they really have gotten shredded. I mean, even back when they had Lamar Jackson, this is a, this is a bad defense. Old misses. I think I I'm in a little, like a pool, if you will. And one of the questions is who's the highest scoring team in week one. You can make the case. It, it might be Ole Miss mm-hmm. and Ole Miss might put up 55. I mean, that, that, they have the ability to do that. This is a team in Louisville lost a lot of talent. Tutu Atwell's gone. Desperate Patrick's gone. I don't know what Malik Cunningham is. Uh, they have a new offensive coordinator. I, I, I just, I don't think they're very good. They committed a lot of turnovers last year. They're just a mess of a team, frankly. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little concerned for them in this game on that fast turf. The secondary is really gutted, frankly. Um, they, they, I don't even think they've decided who the corners are yet. They have a new transfer coming in. Um, I I don't know what they are. I think they're going to get drilled. So now I want you to rate my week one picks. So my first one app state minus 11 over ECU. I will say I got it at 10 and a half. I think there's a chance Cam Peoples puts up another performance like he did in the Myrtle Beach Bowl where he runs for 200 yards and five touchdowns or whatever the hell it was. ECU is just not a very good team. Yeah, I think I actually agree with you there. I think Chase Bryce is actually a pretty good replacement after he's done well in camp. Moved on. Yeah. Um, You mentioned um, the running back. I think ECU, the problem that they have is they're, they're a pretty good offensive team, but they just lose the battle of the trenches. They, they don't have good offensive or defensive lines and you know, defensively they suck. So uh, yeah, I think you've got a good number that that's moved down a little bit. People are taking and believing in ECU a little bit, but 10 and a half kind of seems like a, you know, I don't know, 38, 24 type of game. Mm-hmm. Uh, my next pick um, UNC Virginia tech over. I think Sam Howell tries to go out and have a statement W and then Braxton, what's his name? Brack, the um, guy they transferred in from Oregon. Burmeister. Bur- Burmeister. It's three and one as a starter in a, in those wins. I think he put up 30 points in a few of them. Set at 64 and a half right now. I think it's just going to be a high scoring game. I don't know. It's just kind of my gut. Yeah, I think it's first to 30 wins. And, and I think obviously people are going to believe that's North Carolina. I, I think it's a tough game. I think it's a tough spot for Carolina. Yeah, that's I why I stayed away are, from the points. I think people are buying way too much into this team as a whole. I like how, but they lost a lot of talent last year. Defensively, they're never good. And it is a really tough ass to go on the road and win in Blacksburg on a mm-hmm. Friday night. I mean, you know that fan base is going to be ready to go. Or Thursday night, I'm sorry. Um, they haven't had games in a long time. I think books are goating people into taking Carolina here. Wouldn't surprise me if Votek win the game. Yeah. No, and I mean, like you said, UNC lost two of maybe the top seven or eight running backs you can make the argument for last season. Mm-hmm. So it's- and and keep in mind, you know, they lose Deami Brown, who you know is a high level receiver for them. Um, you know, and look, I like their offense. They'll, they'll bring guys right in, but they lose him. They lose Daz Newsome, uh, Michael Carter, Javante Williams. Um, you know, they have some kids coming back and they brought in Ty Chandler from Tennessee, but you know, they, they've got some chemistry to, 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 to work through and, mm-hmm. um, you know, we'll see, but it, for me, it's really about defense. And then they lose Chaz Surratt as well, who was kind of their leader on defense. Their secondary is good though. And, you know, they should be able to kind of hopefully figure it out, but they're never on the same page. It seems like defensively and offensively. So not a terrible pick. It sounds like. 
No, I, I think, okay. it's, like I said, I think it's probably first to 30 wins. Okay. Um, next one, I know we'd already talked about Hawaii and them not being a great team. And I know it's a bit cliche. Hawaii is, just to confirm, Hawaii is playing at home, correct? They're not going to be playing at uh, Portland State or wherever they're playing? Uh, no, that would be a home game, I'd have to imagine. Okay, I yeah. I, I would hope they're not going to Portland yeah, State. It's, yeah, it's, okay. it's at home. I, I just wanted to double check for the, the record because I know it's cliche, but it is true. Hawaii is a completely different team when they play at home. I believe you said on Pick Central in like the last like five seasons, it's like something ridiculous, isn't it? It's like they're like 30 and like, yeah, like eight or home over the last 32 games i think they're 12 and 20 on the road so mm-hmm. yeah it's it's not good I, you're not going to make <laughs> a lot of money betting on you know hawaii on the road it's mm-hmm. just that simple now when you look at since 2015 at home um you know hawaii is i don't i don't have their numbers in front of me but they're significantly better at home than they are on the road so yeah i mean I was big number the, 21 and a half. That's the only thing. Yeah. I mean, they should be pissed off after that performance. I, I they should be able to, to wax Portland state. I don't have the lowdown uh, on every single team, but yeah. I'll be real guys. Like it's wild because on the road, Hawaii's bad. Um, but you know, when you look at since 2015, I, I hate to burst the bubble here. People kind of just assume they're really good. If, if I ask you in America where Hawaii is, at home against the spread over the last, what is that, six seasons? What would you, mm-hmm. say, where would they rank? I would probably put Out of them 130 teams. Uh, I'd probably put them somewhere close to like so, 70. I was like, don't you dare say 65. <laughs> no, so I, I would put them in the lower half. And I think, truly, I think that it's people who remember Hawaii as a bailout game. Because they're down big, they bet Hawaii late at night. They're kind of falling asleep watching it, and it hits, and people are like, "Oh, you got to bet Hawaii." When this is at home. A, this, that's what I think. I mean, that's I, just I my say eighty third in the country. Well, this is something that again, this is a total myth. Okay, the whole Hawaii is good at home thing is not true. It's just not. Okay, they are brain. dead last in the country over the last six years against the spread at home. They're 11 and 26 at home against the spread. That's 29% cover percentage. Dead last. No one's worse. Akron's second worst, 31%. So they're almost 2% worse than the worst team. It's never good to be in the same sentence as Akron. Ask LeBron James. Listen, I would not be betting on Hawaii. Totals, I don't mind it. But they're just not very good against the spread. Fair enough. I'll be taking that. And those are my decent list. Hawaii teams too. <laughs> These have been decent Hawaii teams, but they play in a lot of close games. So would I lay 21 and a half? You know, Portland State's a different animal. You know, they did cover 11 out of the 37. You know, there are probably a lot of FCS teams mixed in there, but, you know, laying over three touchdowns at Hawaii, I'm not really looking to do it. There's a lot of other games that are other bet. Okay. And then my last one, I need a little help here. Would you rather have Georgia or UCLA in a teaser? Um, Georgia, UCLA. Um, well, you're, t- you're taking one, two dogs. So you're taking UCLA to what, eight and a half or nine, really depends mm-hmm. on the number you're getting. Um, I like LSU, so I, I'm not really too interested there. I would definitely rather have Georgia, surely, because I think that game is within a touchdown. I think it's probably one of the better games of the weekend. It's a total toss up. Sharp money's on Georgia. So yeah, I, I would I would I would be putting Georgia in there. Okay, cool. Now, can we grab uh, maybe one or two of your locks of the week or your favorite plays of the week before we let you go? Yeah. No lock. Don't say lock. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite play of the week. Can we okay. say that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, a couple that I've played. I have Kansas State. I, I've been kind of banging that drum. Um, that's gonna go to three here soon. I got two and a half minus 109. It's up to two and a half minus 128. So that's going to go to three. And I have no reason to believe it won't. Would I lay three? Probably. I think they win like 31 21. I think Chris Kleiman's really building a winning culture there. Uh, I think they have the best offense in Manhattan that they've had since Tyler Lockett was there back in 2014. Mm hmm. They're not a team that's known for offense, but Skylar Thompson's really good. They have a great running back in Deuce Vaughn. They've got really capable receivers. And I think they have a defense that's on the upswing. This is a Stanford team that's really fallen by the wayside, really since you know, the last three or four years. Defensively, they've not been good. Um, they lost a lot on the offensive line last year. They have a new quarterback. Game one's about experience, and Kansas State just has way more of it. 
Um, you know, I'm continuing to, to like more and more UTSA against Illinois. I think Illinois, I don't think they're very good. I think they were just kind of overshadowed because of how bad Illinois was. UTSA is legit. They've got mm-hmm. a really good running back in Sincere McCormick. Um, they have great quarterback play. They're going to be a good team in Conference USA. I think Illinois is an upset alert. Um, I talked before on Pick Central. I laid 17 and a half with Georgia Tech. Uh, that's up to 18 and a half. I'd probably still lay it. Northern Illinois is really bad. And I think Ja Tech, I think for them, it's about cleaning up unforced errors this year. Um, they were, I think, eighth from the bottom last year in penalties per game. Jeff Collins, the goal this year that for them is to stop the unnecessary penalties and stupid stuff, the turnovers, things of that nature. Jeff Sims, another year older. Um, I think Georgia Tech just beats them up pretty bad. You know, wins that game like 38, 17 or something. Um, I like that one. Uh, maybe throw a couple more that I, that I like out. Uh, there's so many games. I, I think Alabama's team total it looks interesting against Miami. I don't really feel like laying a big number with them, but I think mm-hmm. they're going to score a lot of points. I don't know if Miami's made the next step uh, defensively. Instead of laying points, I'm just kind of looking at a team total there. Um, not really sure I, I, what's Indiana without Michael Penix. I think I was just a team you really don't want to play <laughs> without uh, without their quarterback. Um, and then I'll be looking at the added board. I mean, we still have all the added games as well that that, that don't have lines yet. So uh, I don't. I don't think anyone's wanted to play Iowa in 35 years. No, I I wouldn't. I mean, they're they're always. <laughs> just corn fed and, and, you know, just good, good football players, you know, good running backs, always decent quarterback play. They're well coached um, without Michael Penix. Um, I, I wouldn't want to play Iowa. And last, last question. You mentioned pick central. You've been going back to the studio up there, Barstool sports. Do we yeah, have any no, updates of what's going on? I don't, I, for, sadly, I, I haven't gotten much on it. Um, you know, some days it looks like I'm, I'm going to come back and then the next it's uh You know, unfortunately, I I can't I can't create the contracts, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it sucks. It sucks that that I put myself in this predicament, but um, it is what it is. Um, Either way, you know, next Monday, I'm going to either you know be there or or start my own thing back up again. So, um, look, I've said before, I would like to be there. I think I have things that 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 I think are moneymakers. I think would do well with them behind them. But, um, you know, I, I can't I can't work for free forever. You know, and, you know, I know that I left, but, you know, eventually I got to I got to try to start to to to, to separate or, or 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 be there. And I want to be there. But, um, you know, it's hard to even just sit down and, and, and talk. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, we absolutely love you when you're on Pick Central. Where can the people find you online? Where can they check you out? Um, drop your name. Yeah, you can just check me out on this sit down or uh, on my Twitter account. Uh, Jeff Nader, J-F-F-N-A-D-U. I've got stuff I'm working on and, and doing, so you can check me out there. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. You got Thank it. Thank take you, it easy, man. buddy. Okay, take it easy.